let's maybe introduce ourselves briefly. So some of you on this channel already have uh, seen me before. My name is Wolfgang Kilpert. I joined, I think, this channel a few uh, months ago. I've uh, been increasingly enjoying it, learned a lot. Um, I have uh, uh, gotten into this agile lean thing about 12 years ago when I was uh, trying to solve real problems with uh, engineering teams I was uh, responsible for and uh, I'm still excited to keep learning and uh, so I hope we have something that uh, can help the community to learn but we also want to learn from your responses and hopefully ongoing dialogues. Simon. Yeah, thanks Wolfgang. Um, so my name is Simon Powers and uh, I'm uh, very honoured to be here tonight actually. Um, uh, from Pierre was just introduced um, his history of the community and uh, I've also um, uh, spent some time building communities. Uh, I founded AWA, Ventures for Agile, um, about five years ago and I've uh, sort of been uh, linking in people from all over the world to try to raise the bar of agility and uh, what we uh, do for organisational change. So um, my background was working with uh, software originally and then rapidly moving to sort of whole organizational change and uh, encountering the sort of challenges that people face when trying to change the way that we work or organize ourselves with um, typically thousands of people and uh, focusing mostly on the human element of that and how we deal with change and how we deal with um, uh, meeting the problems of today. So uh, I'm very uh, pleased to be here with Wolfgang. So I was invited here, I think originally by Wolfgang, and uh, we both have been working on this for uh, some time. And um, yeah, we're very uh, pleased to present what we're gonna be showing you tonight, which is the sort of summation of, um, uh, you know, a lot of collaboration and a lot of work and a lot of enjoyment and fun. So, um, and we hope it's gonna be very useful. So yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Um, shall I, um, shall we, shall I share my screen? Uh, we've still got quite a few people coming in. Um, so it might be worth just waiting just a couple more minutes until it's sort of quietened down in terms of numbers of just a couple of minutes. Um, so perhaps, um, um, perhaps we could uh, maybe just take one or two minutes to say sort of how this came about Wolfgang. How did we meet each other and, uh, yeah. you know, how did, how, how did this, uh, how did this collaboration begin? Right, right. Yeah. So I had the uh, opportunity to work at a uh, mid-sized company in Berlin and we actually um, uh, brought you in, uh, you and your team, to help uh, raise the bar in terms of uh, agile leadership skills uh, uh, and, and coaching skills uh, across the business. And yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we had a wonderful dialogue right there, but uh, we obviously didn't stop uh, talking. And so we were both kind of sharing our experiences of you know, what are the things that obviously go well and that keep us excited about this, but honestly also what are the stumbling blocks, right? That we one way or the other keep running into um, with these uh, agile transformations, agile journeys, whatever you call them. And uh, that's where we started, gee, what can we do about this, right? And so let's put our heads together, Simon. Yeah, and we, um, so we, so we looked at the work that we've done together and also looked at, um, our, so both of us have worked in many different companies in our careers and um, with the consultancy that I run as well, I often have the chance to uh, review actual transformations that I'm directly working on, the people at AWA are working on. And, um, and together we kind of came up with this, these, these sort of common blocks or kind of stumbling blocks and then worked backwards to kind of say, well, how could these have been avoided? What kind of things could have happened at the beginning which would have made it so much smoother later on? Um, and then we, called, we looked at some of these things and uh, we said, well, these, these prerequisites, um, if you have these things, then you're much more likely to succeed. And, uh, and that's kind of what we're gonna share mm -hmm. today, tonight, yep. this evening, or the morning, or evening, or nighttime, <laughs> depending where you are in the world. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, uh, so I'll share my screen because we've put together a, a slide deck, um, but we're going to also, in uh, you know, in typical uh, style, we'll also be doing a bit of um, breakout rooms and, and working together and discussing. So we're, we're very interested to hear your feedback on what we're going to present tonight. So this is the first time that Wolfgang and I are presenting this work that we've done together, and so uh, we're very interested in your feedback. 
Uh, there's bound to be bits and bobs which we've missed and, and things that we've perhaps overemphasized. So we look for your help as part of a community to grow this, share with you. And we hope that uh, not only you can take this forward and, and use this, but also you can feed back to us so that we can improve it as well. So uh, I'll just share my screen now and, uh, and then we'll start. So it's really just to kind of uh, help us through um, the sort of uh, times and things, the deck. So bear with me a second. Okay, so hopefully you can see my uh, slide. Now you're going to see the PowerPoint at the moment. And I'm just going to play that so you should then be able to see the actual deck. Um, so can you see, can we see presenter view, Wolfgang, or can we see the actual proper view? Um, I see the presenter view right now. So you may want to shift in the settings. Oh yeah, this is, this is it. Yep. Good. Perfect. Fantastic. <laughs> Good. Alrighty. Well, we've done introductions, so let's move on from here. Yeah. Uh, me. Uh, so, uh, oh, this is our uh, Adventures with Agile tag as well. So, um, so, so this is part of our, uh, so from Adventures with Agile perspective, um, we have a kind of logo or a phrase, if you like, uh, make working life better, making working life better. And this is all part, kind of part of that um, process of, um, we hope to make your working life better by sending this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, brilliant. So, um, so, welcome. Oh, uh, so if you like, so in um, Zoom, we have a kind of chat um, thing. So of course, obviously, because there's a lot of us, we're not going to be able to do introductions and, and work around everybody because we'd be here all night listening to everybody's stories. But what we can do is we can use the chat to um, sort of put where you're from, a bit how you're feeling, that kind of thing. And any comments or questions can also go in the chat and then we'll monitor them so that we can answer questions at the end. Um, so feel free to use the Zoom chat uh, for any communication. Um, and so um, going on to the first slide, we had a look, um, you know, what are the common challenges? Uh, and uh, Wolfgang, did you want to have a yeah. talk Yeah, about so exactly. I mean, this is actually some of the verbatim that was our initial chat, right? Have you ever heard uh, these challenges like make us more efficient and do this by the end of the year, right? We want to be agile. Uh, Oh, by the way, we don't really have budget for this, uh, neither for training or for hiring uh, uh, experienced coaches. Um, uh, oh, and by the way, we're highly distributed and yada, 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 right? So you hear all these things. I, I uh, can't see all that many faces right now, but uh, some of those that I see, I saw a, a brief smile. So I, I think these things are familiar. And then you move on and, and you look at, oh, there's, but there's signs of hope, right? I have small, at least some small uh, agile teams that have a proper product owner, a proper scrum master, they go through the motions and agile team. And then what? Oh, management interferes, right? Um, then they squeeze in and yada, yada. And then you start realizing, geez, scrum doesn't work here, right? So what can we do with this? Uh, where does this all come from? Right, and uh, then if you go to the next um, uh, point, there's obviously quite some literature uh, on this available these days, right? The annual state of agile report is one great source that um, gives us feedback of what people have marked as their predominant challenges. Uh, I don't obviously wanna go through all of those, but uh, you know, there's uh, obviously leadership participation or support, there's cultural um, compatibility, that seems to be um, lack of skills uh, that seems to really get in the way. And then another questionnaire here that was really asking for why things fail, very, very similar uh, responses. Um, so, um, you know, it obviously goes uh, by how you ask, whom you ask, how many people um, will say that their um, uh, uh, transformation failed or at least missed to really uh, live up to the expectations. But it's probably fair to say more than two thirds of these transformations don't go where they are supposed to go. So, you know, I don't think we as a community can really be happy about this. I think uh, I remember Pierre, we had some discussions about this earlier where you raised very, very similar thoughts. So I think that should be enough as kind of uh, setting the scene, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because um, what, what um, struck me is that we look back at these statistics when we're putting these together and it was the same failure rates of change programs 
since the 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, 2010s, now 2020s are, are coming that way. And uh, the failure rate seems to stay around the same, 70%. And thinking, you know, how can this, how can this be? We've got all this agile knowledge, all this people knowledge, and yet the, 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 um, the failure rate still stays the same. And, uh, and this has certainly been the experience that uh, when we talk to people in the community, it's like, how, how's your agile transformation going? And you sort of see the head goes in the hands and says, well, they have a budget, all these things that Trevor's talking about, nothing seems to be changing. So hopefully the stuff that we, we, we share tonight might make a difference. Right. So um, looking at the uh, problems, we thought that we would um, sort of gather some, um, uh, change the song. there we go, we thought we'd have a, a bit of a breakout session so that uh, you could also share some of the um, problems and things that you have seen, the blockers to change in some of the programs that you might be working on, or if you're in an organization, what have you seen in your organization? Um, and we could um, sort of go into breakout in just seven minutes. And um, we actually have, um, I think that's small again, and uh, start sharing my screen. Uh, just find my screen. So um, we've actually got a, um, uh, a little word cloud as well that we can create. So I'm just going to grab you a link for that. And when we're going to go into breakout rooms, we can discuss the um, um, discuss what problems you've seen. And then um, what we can do is um, uh, I'm just going to find the link for you. And uh, what we can do is uh, if when you're in the breakout room, you can actually share, um, you can uh, type in things that you come up with, problems and things, into the, uh, into the word club. And then everybody, no matter what breakout room you're in, will be contributing to the same word club. And then when we come back out of breakout rooms, we can see all of the things that we've been talking around, and then we can sort of review that for a second. Great. Brilliant. Okay. So hopefully you can open that. And what you can do in this, the way this window thing works is you type in your one uh, thing, you press save, you can see the word cloud, but then you can add more. So don't feel like you only have to add one item to the word cloud. You can add more as you talk about it. So let's go into our breakout rooms. And just as a reminder, what we're discussing are problems and challenges that you have experienced or seen that have stopped um, the sort of transformation or change program really reaching the, um, the potential that it could have done. All right. Oh, thank you. Awesome. So um, it looks like we had lots of good discussions there. Um, and um, I'll share the um, a slightly larger version of the word cloud. Yep. Um, so hopefully you can see that. So these are all the things that we came up with. Um, so yep. this is our collective intelligence that um, we pull together. And, and this is one of the techniques actually, uh, which we use in organizational change is to, with large groups, we break people into small groups. We create a shared model of the way that people are working so that then we can all look back on that and make sense of it. This is the true meaning of sense making. So let's just take a sort of 30 seconds, 40 seconds, just to have a look at what it is that we have created. Uh, I'm assuming you can see my screen with the big word cloud. Yeah. Yep. Oh, here's a fascinating COVID-19. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. To the right. Yeah. So a big one there, right in the middle, lack of trust. Yep. The leadership not owning. These are the big things that we're, that we're seeing in our, in our group, our sense making of what we bring. Hmm. Fear of change. Fear of change, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, starting with, the, starting with the, the right people, having the right people is very key. Good, okay, so what we'll do is we're, we're happy to share this word cloud uh, with you all um, after this. But you can also have a, a copy of the deck as well that we are uh, working on, uh, we're using. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on. So we're going to have a look at the prerequisites. So how do we actually counter some of these things in this uh, word cloud that we've come up with? How do we avoid some of these things? Um, what can we do up front to reduce the probability of running into these problems later on? And so that's what Wolfgang and I have been working on. And so this is the beginning of uh, us really presenting the work that we've done to solve these problems. So the reason why we do that at the beginning, these uh, problems and, and work and things like that, is that anchors us in to the whole point of this change. The point of the change is to 
uh, for, for organizations to be able to solve the problems that they face, not to do agile or do any of these things. And when we try to solve those problems, we get all of that, that stuff that we've just generated in the work cloud. So these are real things that we all face because we've got to solve the problems in the world. We've got to solve things like climate change. We've got to solve the things like complex product development and service development. We have to solve these things with loads of people getting together. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to move forward. So when we try and solve those problems, we come up with all these things, these resistances, these leadership problems, all these things that we've just identified. And so to be able to move forward, we've got to unpick all of that and get to a point where we can actually move forward as a society and move forward as our organizations. And so this, this is, this, these are the kind of steps that Wolfgang and I have put together to help that process. So let me move on so to uh, show. Do you want to talk a bit about this metaphor, Wolfgang? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we were discussing, um, right, initially, how do, we, how do we break this down? How do we make this uh, understandable between what is really a prerequisite and what is something that allows us to then gain speed and move in the right direction, right? And that's where we came up with this metaphor of, okay, if we're trying to fly a plane, now I have to admit I'm not a pilot, even though my son is trying to uh, obtain a license, so I get to hear more about it than uh, I ever wanted to. But a friend of mine actually who is a, a, a licensed pilot had offered me uh, to hand me a, um, a, a check uh, a list, a full um, a binder. Unfortunately, it didn't arrive yet on time. Otherwise, I would be waving this up here now to just make the point that before you even get to the starting line position, there's a whole lot that has to be done before you're allowed to really enter the start, um, the, the runway, so that you can make an attempt to really uh, gain speed and ultimately gain altitude, right? And that's the metaphor we're applying here as well. So there gotta be some basic alignment work that has to happen before we are ready to move forward and make progress, which then means Uh, we will have to do some guidance, particularly for the leadership folks, right? This was also responding to lots of the inputs that you gave uh, in, just in this uh, breakout session, that we are all knowing what we are actually talking about. And then it's very important to get a broad engagement, not just with a few agile enthusiasts or some development leaders that might have read a cool book, Right? But we really want to have a very broad engagement uh, and participation and ultimately also buy-in for what we're trying to do. And based on that, then we have a much higher chance of being set up so that we can affirm a deep commitment to the change based on understanding, based on an informed decision, and then really take off, gain speed and gain, uh, gain altitude. Yeah. Okay. That's the and, metaphor. And to emphasize, these are prerequisites. This is not the change program we're talking about. Mm -hmm. These are the prerequisites before that happens. So if we get these in place, then whatever change program is likely to work more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have a look at the first one, um, which is alignment. Yep. And um, we're going um, to, so, so there's four steps to this, as Wolfgang says. And uh, the first one is alignment. And, uh, so we had a look at what this was, and um, based upon uh, running quite a few different change programs in organizations and uh, our collective kind of thinking about what is it that people want? When we go into an organization, different organizations ask us for different views. What are you going to do here? What, what is it that's going to, how do you, you know, why should we hire you to help us with our change program? And what we realized was that there were four views that people asked for. And different organizations emphasize strongly, normally on one or two of these views, but don't actually ask for all of them. And so the, the, the four views, um, the first one, outcomes. So what is the outcome? What, why are we doing it in the first place? This is the purpose, the why. So for us, this has always been the most key thing. You know, what's the point of us coming in? How do we know when we've succeeded? If we don't know why we're doing it, then we won't know when we've, we don't know what the outcomes are. We won't know when we've succeeded. So really looking at what outcomes are, and it's amazing how many people don't actually ask for this or have no clue why they're doing an agile transformation. Uh, we're doing it because it's agile and that's the thing to do. Well, let's look at the real business outcomes. The next um, one is actions. So this is often um, 
uh, people uh, looking at um, sort of how are you doing it? What's the what's the project plan? You know, what meetings do we need? Who's going to be involved? How much does it cost? These are the very real practical steps. You know, how many people are going to be involved? What uh, trainings are we going to need? When are they going to be scheduled? It's a very action-based how. Um, the change theory is actually when I um, when I first started doing this, I would always lead with this. It's like, hey, here's all the theory. Give us a go. Let us let us have a go with your, your organisation. And um, you know, and with all this theory, you know, if we practice some of this, we're back, back, good stuff's bound to happen. Um, and so uh, there are still some organisations that we work with who are um, very happy with uh, just working with the, the theory that we present and uh, letting us have a go, um, but not many, um, which is unfortunate because that's fantastic when you get that play. Um, but um, it isn't uh, a common, uh, common um, uh, invite. Uh, and then the last one is the culture or behaviours. So how do we do things around here? How are we going to interrelate? How do we collaborate? So it's the who and the scope we've also included in this. So you can relate these things. The outcomes is the why. The change theory is the what are we doing. The uh, behaviours are the who and the scope and how we're going to behave. And the actions are or how we're actually going to go about that on a day-to-day -day practical level. And if we look at the change programme through these four lenses, then we can start to say, well, what alignment do we need through these four lenses to enable us to move forwards for when we start. If we don't have alignment in these, if we don't have alignment in outcomes or alignment at how we're doing it or alignment at any of these things or any of the beliefs from the, from the, the change theory, then we're going to run into problems. So, um, so just to reiterate, we've, to simplify this, this is the why, what, how and who of the change and we want alignment around this. Yeah. And, and, so, and maybe, um, Simon, mm -hmm. if I may add uh, just on yeah. this uh, very picture, we, we picked this mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with an idea on mind. Um, this also speaks to, you know, we're talking about alignment, which means we really align and share and obviously um, uh, bring together the views on, for example, why are we doing this? That doesn't mean that we're kind of like all being cookie cut, uh, cookie cut right? It's not all the same but it is like you see here you know with these with these uh, wonderful creatures right that they know how to go in the same direction because they obviously share a goal right but then they each fly individually right so there is some some idea behind that that we also want to um, uh, emphasize here it's the alignment it's really talking through why we're doing this how we're doing this etc before so that once we then um, take uh, on motion, right, we're much more likely to move in the same direction. Thank you. Right, without creating pain. This actually reminds me of something that happened a few hours ago in my garden. I had a huge swarm of bees coming to the garden and my children were out playing and they were like, Dad, leg it, run! We all had to leg it inside and close the doors and literally a swarm of bees like that came into the garden and luckily they went over the hedge rather than through the window. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> Amazing how nature is so coordinated, this swarm of swarm. Right. Good. So, um, so now we're going to dive deeper into these uh, why, what, how, and who. Yes. Um, so we can actually look at some of these things. And um, what we've done is uh, we've actually got a couple of formats. And so we want to ask your opinion about some things. So we've got a very high level view, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a, a list of, of, uh, of items. And then uh, we've got a more detailed view and purpose but these are slides so there's a lot of text here so we wanted your opinions and um, what we thought we could do is uh, I think we can if I expand that everyone so I can see them uh, in zoom you have these little voting things so you should be able to see uh, I think it's if you go to participants I think that's how we do it I remember rightly uh, my zoom controls have disappeared off the side of my screen uh, I think it's or uh, did you want the reaction yeah reaction right that's at the bottom you have this uh, bar where you could um, pick a reaction can anyone see the well we'll soon see that's it so uh, if you see a little thumbs up so what we're going to do is we're going to ask you because we, we've got these uh, we've got these different slides and we can either do the detailed one like this or we can do the um, the lightweight one so what we thought was, is if you want to do, um, what should we say, Let's, if you want to do the lightweight one, 
then stick up a thumb like this. And if you would rather do the more detailed one, then don't stick up anything. And that way we can know if you see a whole load of thumbs come up, then we know that we'll, we'll focus on the uh, simpler one. We've got a number of these slides, uh, whether it's more text or simpler text. So this is us experimenting with our slide deck, and we're going to present this in, in a few different places. Cool. So um, if you want to do a little count there. Um, so I think we've only got like four or five Thumbs. Yep. things coming up there. Yep. Uh, maybe can a I few more, six. Can I just come in there? Yes. Um, we've clearly demonstrated one of the disadvantages of positive voting only. So yeah. We opted for the thumbs up as our response, yep. and and no indication as a response, um, and that clearly has not really generated the result. How about we try the yes no, which you've got in the participants section. Oh. So that way, you're likely to get everyone indicating for or against. Do we want Good to try that? Much yes. better idea. Thanks, Femi. This is, uh, as we were doing it, I was thinking, hmm, how many people aren't voting here? I'm completely saying, <laughs> right. thanks for that. Let's Thank do you. that then. So, uh, so can some can, of you can I add something? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. The way of your voting, because the problem is we have 61, so you have to pass through all the, the pictures. One of the good things you'll be using, you're using here a pasty block, and you just, uh, yes and no means this, you're hiding. Okay. So if you can't see the picture, it means you're hiding, so you can count easily the voters. So the, the, the other challenge with, with that, perhaps, is that many people haven't got a video, so I'm not sure whether that's... Uh, yeah. But so they're not I liked, voters. I, I liked I liked uh, Femi's um, uh, suggestion. Right in the participant, you can hit either yes or no. And so if we make the lightweight the yes and the detailed the no, we should get to account pretty quickly. And then we can skim through the participants yep. as well. Or chat room in the chat. Um, if you yep. use a, as a host, you have a polling feature, right? Just doing a poll of yes and no, combining these two things might. Be a very quick way. Yeah. So I'm going to stick my facilitator hat on here because the voting mechanism here is not the important point. So um, with my facilitator hat on, I'm going to say we're going to use the yes no functionality in Zoom with the participants. So if you go into them, you'll see that there is a, uh, if you go into participants, there's a button at the bottom or on the side or wherever it might be, and you'll see a list of um, things and you can click on yes or no in the bottom. So um, which way around was it Wolfgang? Yes was uh, the... Sh yes is the short one and uh, no is the long one. Okay and then we can quickly skim through the yeses and nos and ignore anyone who is not voting. Yeah it actually counts for us so I see right now 12 for ye uh, yes at 14, 24 for no. Fantastic look at that even counts for you. I didn't even know yes. it did. Brilliant. Thank you, Femi. You so, rested so Pierre, the, if I'm if I'm missing the mathematical mindset, I'm you know. It's uh, a no. So, <laughs> exactly. It's a no. It's a no. So which one was the no again? The detailed one. The so detailed one. Yeah. Detailed one. Oh, fantastic. So now we have that. So thank you for that. It was a uh, minute yep. of everybody's time, and now we have a way forward. So, um, so. Uh, so I'll start on this one. Maybe we'll alternate Wolfgang with the yep. uh, the different yep. views. So, um, so remember, what we're doing here is we are looking for alignment before we start. So this is prerequisites. And this particular um, uh, alignment is around the what. So this is the theory of change. What are we actually doing? What are the underlying things that are guiding the change process? So if, for example, we've got here duration and scale of changes. If we think that, um, uh, that this is going to be done in three months, whereas the Agile coaches know that Agile transformations take several years, then we're not aligned. And we're going to hit a, a problem in three months' time when the contracts come up for renewal and nothing's really happened, right? So if you're looking for short wins, because that's the objective, then you know, you've got some alignment there. Uh, iterative approach. If we're looking for big project plans, Gantt charts, two-year plans, funding up front, very different than an iterative, agile, highest priority things first. So these are the kind of things that we need alignment on to start with. 
uh, leadership behavior? Is it that everyone else has to change? Or is it that actually the leadership's behavior guides the rest? Well, what is it? You know, and, and Wolfgang and I are not dictating what your change program is or what your beliefs are. But what we are saying is that whatever they are, you need to have alignment on them because that's going to come and bite you later on. Um, and we're happy to share some of our opinions, um, but uh, uh, overall, we're trying to content, create a content for you. So cultural change, um, people are process led. Are you going to install a framework process led or are you going to uh, derive um, new ways of working from interactions and um, the uh, sense making that goes on with collaboration? which is a coaching approach, which is what we favor, the people over process. Uh, structures and operating models. So are we optimizing just IT? Or are we optimizing, optimizing the whole of the organization? Or is it just these one team over here who's doing Scrum? And if they succeed doing Scrum, then we know it our works and we'll roll it out across the rest of the organization. You know, what is the holistic picture of organizational structural change that we're looking at? These are things we need alignment on. Would you like to add anything to that, Wolfgang, before we move on to the next one? Uh, no, that's good. I think you want to probably move back because why I think came before and that should probably go next. Yes, you normally start with yes. why. Yep. Yes. Can you respect the plan, please? Uh, no, we are, no, 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 wait a minute. We're adaptive. Yeah. <laughs> so Thanks, why? Yeah. Normally start with why. Yeah, exactly. Start with why. Exactly. So this also came up in the uh, breakout session that I had the honor to to be part of. Um, this is probably the number one item where things, in my op uh, observation in the four uh, transformations I had the opportunity to uh, be part of, it goes wrong. Because, uh, you know, if we don't really know, and uh, we might know privately, why we want, uh, why we're interested in agile, but if we haven't really aligned on it, if we haven't really wrestled to the ground, what drives this? We're very, very likely uh, to not end well. And this is not the ultimate list. This might not be even the appropriate list for your organization. Uh, it seems like a lot of the reasons center around these things. Sometimes it's all of them, sometimes maybe two or three are just giving kind of like the frame of what the organization is really needing. But this is paramount that you really think through and uh, and spend enough time to really understand why you're changing. So it's obviously adaptability, responsiveness, um, in some cases, uh, predictability. So really understand why and, and where you're doing this. It's uh, customer focus very often in public organizations might be the citizen focus. Uh, employees, right, the employee, if, the, um, if there are uh, employee surveys uh, uh, showing uh, real problems, that often uh, leads to uh, emphasizing uh, um, changing things uh, through an agile transformation. I've been time and again called into these things for quality issues because uh, customers were having real trouble, uh, problems were amounting, revenues fell short because of quality problems. Uh, and that's where Agile was often seen as a, as a way to, to help uh, address this uh, burnout. Value, right? This is uh, really focusing primarily on customer value, but really helping uh, showing value earlier. And thus, this is very tightly coupled with the next one, uh, which often is the case. It's about reducing risk, right? You can have gigantic risk management systems is the only time you really see whether you're running into the risk or not is by the end, right? When all the things are supposed to come together, that's a very different thing than obviously, as we know, if we're uh, building things incrementally and, and uh, iteratively uh, and we can already deliver early value that reduces risk, etc. And last, innovation often um, I've seen Agile also being um, uh, uh, sponsored or being uh, called upon uh, as, a, as a way to go uh, forward because uh, particular larger companies found themselves to be bu too bureaucratic, uh, uh, finding uh, that new ideas, new innovation don't really make it out to the other end uh, fast enough and uh, are ready to, to, to change something like this. Yeah. Simon, anything else I might have missed? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think um, 
uh, I think all of these uh, relate to these underlying business problems that we're facing. So what, what is it that is the challenge to have our organizations succeed? And, uh, and these are the kind of things that uh, kind of make up that complex environment, that complex adaptive environment. Um, so we'll go on. Thank you for doing that so succinctly as well. Wolfgang. Brilliant. Sure, um, sure. And so um, looking at just moving on to the how. Yeah. Um, so uh, so looking at um, so this is very much the practical implementation. How are we going to implement this thing? Um, so looking at it from a holistic perspective, are we looking at it from a silo perspective? Um, uh, and uh, that really sums up to me from this systems thinking view. So systems thinking really comes from uh, e examining the interaction between the parts as much as the parts themselves and looking at it from a holistic perspective. So how are we going to approach that? Um, experimentation is something which uh, is a big um, thing in, the, in my heart. Uh, this is how you solve complex adaptive problems. We experiment. And if the word experimentation throws fear into the hearts of the uh, senior management team, then we've go back to the change, um, uh, the theory of change, and look at this idea of predictability, you know, and and, and status-based, expert-driven organisations. So if we have to be right, then you know that's that's going to be a problem for the organisation to solve these types of problems. Uh, and experimentation for me is when we start talking about that. Often that can uncover some of the underlying beliefs. Uh, sustainability reward systems. Uh, so this is this is huge. Especially, I mean, I work in banks, and uh, the reward systems that are endemic in banks inhibit their ability to succeed, not improve it. Which is the exact opposite of why the reward system was there. But people have been so used to these reward systems that they're very, you know, they're in people's employment contracts. So they're very hard to roll back. Um, but there are things that are going to come across. So having that, just having that card on the table, that at some point we're going to discuss that. Is, is, is enough in the prerequisites. Um, and then the last one here in the how is, uh, is also fundamental. It's having people in the organization working on the system, not in it. So in it means you're delivering things, you're working as part of the product development team, you're, you're working in HR, you're in finance, you're part of the, the great um, organization which is creating things for customers. Working on the system means that you are apart from that and in looking in, and helping improve. And this is the role of the enterprise coach, agile coaches, etc. Those people are not delivery focus. They're working on the system, they're outcome focus, and they're helping people improve to get better outcomes. And often not budgeting for that and thinking that everyone has to be delivery focused or comparing coaches to delivery roles and summing up who's got the head count, that's just, it's not gonna work. You've gotta have people working on the system. So that's gotta be a conversation too. Um, anything you want to add on the how, Wolfgang? Yeah, uh, just on this last part, uh, and even if it is, uh, for example, uh, you know, in an uh, engineering team, let's say their build system uh, keeps uh, making problems, right? Then um, even allocating uh, just a certain portion of the capacity of these developers to fixing this is paramount because just wishful thinking will not improve the system. Right, so it's uh, it's in, important when you're disappointed about your system not producing the results or in a way the result that you want. Wishful thinking will not get you better there. Right, it will. In, it's an investment. It's real investment, which means you have to understand and align all the way. You know, the leaders have to understand this is going to cost you before it gets better. Right. And oh, by the way, as the industry keeps moving, right, today it's DevOps, it's what health uh, 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 new techniques, innovation keeps going, right? The competitive landscape will keep growing. So if you believe, oh, just this one year, we'll get to the top and then we're mature and we can turn all this off, think again, right? So this will have to be an ongoing, uh, you have to be ready to, to invest in an ongoing basis and a systematic basis on improvement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the last one um, is the who. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I've been uh, uh, in, in several of these occasions where, oh, yeah, you have this uh, team of a couple of coaches, a couple of scrum masters, right? And you run the agile transformation. Good luck, right? Um, and that will not work. So, again, you have to form this, call it winning coalition, 
Um, and it has to in, include leadership, fairly senior leadership. If you don't see executives uh, really taking part in this, actively taking part in this, um, signs are, chances are you're, you're not going to be successful. Uh, leadership, right? Some leaders might actually feel, uh, oh, what's going to be my role? I hear this agile does less emphasis on middle management um, power. Well, make them part of this change so that you evolve this together in a, in a position that makes the organization stronger and hopefully also the uh, people contributing uh, uh, going forward uh, in this in a better and a more effective uh, way. Obviously, you have to have um, the, the people uh, in there, back to your notion before, um, people don't want to be changed. They want to actively be part of a change, right? Um, uh, and it even goes as far if you have impact on um, most cases, uh, such a, a transformation will have impact on how the interaction with the customer is. Better involve customers. That might be delicate, might be sensitive in, in many situations, um, but it's necessary that, uh, for example, back to this uh, multi-year detailed feature plan, roadmaps, what have you, um, is not likely going to be uh, staying the same as it was. On the other hand, there are offers, uh, there are opportunities for customers to get results earlier that they can really take to test themselves and can influence. And obviously, you ha that has to be a conversation how to bring them in. And even beyond that, uh, shareholders or then the society at large, in depends on the business, obviously, local authorities, global authorities in some cases, you have to figure out how does that impact uh, the... Uh, or. Uh, vice versa, right, is the uh, impact of the transformation. So neglecting this, ignoring this, um, could be uh, a fatal error uh, for making the transformation work. Uh, and we're seeing that more and more now with uh, companies who uh, are fairly successful but have negated their societal or wider environmental issues who share prices are just plummeting because of um, uh, because of their lack of attention to what's happening in the wider area, the wider community of which they exist in. Um, there was a clothing supplier here in the UK who has been doing very, very well, very uh, good agility, getting stuff at very, very short cycle time. And um, they've been um, fantastic customer service, um, fantastic deliveries, all going really, really well. Um, and then uh, it came out uh, about two, three weeks ago that they're using um, pretty much slave child labor in China uh, as, part of their, um, as part of their supply chain. Not, every, not all their clothes, but one part of a particular type of clothing was being su supplied by that. And, and rightly so, share price drops, customers are boycotting the stores, whole thing falls apart. So not looking at the wider ecosystem of your suppliers and your systems um, you know, can completely knock you out. So looking at how do we succeed at business? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so um, what we're going to do now is uh, Wolfgang and I have been talking for a while and also talking through tables uh, in, a, um, in a presentation. We know that can be a little bit dry, uh, so we, we, we do appreciate that. Um, so what we'd like to do now is to, uh, we're going to have another breakout session. Uh, I'll just move the slide on. And, um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to share with you our document. And uh, so what you've got is we've, we've done the, 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 the highlights. I'm just going to stop sharing the screen for a second. So we've looked at the highlights. And, um, and what we've, we've got actually a much more detailed document. And in that document is not only the things we've shown you, but there are also metrics of how you measure whether you've met that prerequisite. So, um, uh, so we're going to share with that document now. So in the chat window, I will share a link. Right, so that should be uh, the first part of the, uh, the checklist. So if I just click on that, make sure it actually works. Yeah, so what you'll find here is a, uh, a PDF. And uh, you can download that. Uh, you can keep that, um, obviously, because I've got it. <laughs> and uh, this, is, um, this is the full list. And we've got the item, the purpose of why we've included it, and a metric to know whether, when you know whether you've actually met that prerequisite or not. So what we're going to do is there's a whole bunch of lists there. We're not expecting you to read them all in this call. We're not expecting you to digest all of this lot. 
um, right now, but you can take it away and uh, go through it in more detail afterwards. Um, but what we are asking you now is we're going to go into a breakout room for 20 minutes and with your team uh, in a breakout room, have a flip through, either discuss the thing as a whole, so like the whole idea, is this a good idea, prerequisites, is, this, is what Wolfgang and I are talking about a fantastic idea or is it a bunch of nonsense? Have a, or you can choose specific prerequisites and discuss those and see how that might have changed things in some of the transformations that you have been part of. So you can just decide in your group which, which way around you want to do it or do a bit of both. So we're going to do this for 20 minutes because that gives you a good chance to sort of have a look through this document and, uh, and hopefully to use, uh, to see how it could be most effective or how it could be most used. So again, with the breakout rooms, uh, I think sort of four or five uh, would be fantastic. Gives a good, um, good enough uh, size group to discuss. Yep. Uh, and if you haven't got a copy of it or you can't download it or there's some issue with you seeing this document, then um, when we're going to put everyone in breakout rooms now. So go into the breakout room if you can see the document. If you can't, just stay back and we'll quickly help you get to the document and then you can go in the breakout room. Good, so brilliant. Still got a few people just coming in. Cool, yep. So someone looks like they got kicked out and come back in again. Fantastic. Good. So uh, hopefully that was useful um, as a, a kind of a deep dive. It's much easier and um, uh, you can get a lot more out of it when you have kind of look at it at your own leisure in small groups. So um, does anyone want to share like one or two insights from uh, their talks? Um, just you know, feel free uh, to come up. We're not going to have a massive discussion, just one or two things uh, and then we're going to move on. Hi, Simon. This is Romy. We're going high. Hi. Um, the first thing that struck us was that uh, alignment with the sponsors because of the list of eight things that was on the piece of paper, right? The items that the, the transformation might want to deliver, not all eight are possible quickly, mm -hmm. right? So it's about being selective about choosing the ones we want and uh, aligning with the sponsors and saying, which are the top three most important things you, you want your transformation to achieve and going for that. Mm -hmm. Thank yep. you for sharing. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, two more um, shares. Yeah, we don't have time for that. Anyone else? I'll, like go, to... I'll go with my group. Um, so, we managed to get through um, three or four points, and the one that stuck most and resonated with us was 2.2 iterative approach. It is very important to ensure that change is iterative and repeating rather than having a linear approach. Um, we inspect and adapt as we go along the way when we introduce change. Um, it's, it's nice to have a strategy document for, for change as a guide. And the important point that we highlighted is that document should be constantly reviewed and adapted along the journey. Thank you, Femi. Thank you for sharing that. Um, would anyone like to share, I've got time for one more share, would anyone like to uh, share anything else that they have come up with? Um, I think I'll just add from my group, so um, Addy and John and I, when we're looking through the alignment, this just follows on what Romy was saying in terms of a starting point for alignment. So the idea about customer experience, customer experience improving customer experience and improving employee experience, Addy mentioned that, you know, from his perspective, there's not necessarily always a focus on the customer experience to begin with. And we're kind of trying to figure out how that would work. And John also rightly pointed out that, you know, from his perspective, you know, customer experience is important, even though organizations don't necessarily start looking at that in their, you know, initial strategy. So it's just a good thing to kind of align about, you know, picking which ones you would start with first. It's good to have all of them, but that may not be the case for the organization. Great. Thank you, Christina. Um, brilliant. So um, what uh, at the end of this, uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, so at the end of this presentation, um, um, there'll be um, a little contact us um, uh, slide with Wolfgang and I's email. 
Um, and uh, if there's any other comments or shares that you've got, either now or afterwards, if you use this afterwards or read through it another time, if there's any shares or any kind of comments, good or bad, um, Wolfgang and I would love to hear any feedback from you uh, so that we can improve and we can continue to adapt as well. So uh, pl please do uh, keep those shares. Uh, you can also write in the chat and go now uh, if you wanted to as well, and then we can save the chat and through them later. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the slide deck. Uh, we've got a, a few more slides which um, we'd just like to run through, uh, and then we'll, um, uh, we'll probably keep it quite tight because of, um, of the, the time, but um, we'll, uh, we've got a few more things to share, which I think are very important in terms of this prerequisite work. Uh, so just sharing slides now, um, and okay, from current slide. Right, so are we good or are we seeing the presenter view? No, we're good. We're good, fantastic. Right, so um, we've got to uh, just like to uh, share some, um, uh, some of the underpinning ideas which go into the remaining parts of this. So if you remember, there were, um, we've got the, uh, the four elements of the runway. So we've looked at the first element of the runway and we split that out into the who, where, why, who, where, why, what, or how, who, where, no, who, what, how, where, what is this? <laughs> so we, we split that out, and uh, now we're going to look at the second one, which is some do's and don'ts. Um, and, um, and we just wanted to share very briefly with you some underpinning um, uh, ideas, the underpinning approach uh, around where we've got these do's and don'ts from. Um, so it gives you a bit of background. Uh, so the first thing is uh, we have, uh, so over the years, we've put together a, a playbook, uh, which is really a systemic coaching conversation. So if you're familiar with professional coaching, you'll know that coaching is about aligning a person's behaviours and actions with their own goals. And so this is what we're doing with the organisation. We're aligning the actions, behaviours to meet their own goals. And this is a systemic approach because we're not dealing with one or two people, we're dealing with potentially hundreds or thousands. Uh, and so we're not going to go through the whole playbook now because that's, that would be like a, like a whole class to do that. Um, but um, basically all I wanted to bring up was that this is a systemic coaching approach. Uh, if there's anything that you want to add, Wolfgang, as I go through, I'll just leave a little nope, space. That's fine. Yep. That's fine. Um, systemic and holistic. Um, so this was uh, th th this some of this uh, thinking. Uh, we've got these quotes from a, a chap, uh, Professor Russell Ackoff. If you haven't heard of Professor Russell Ackoff, then you need to do some googling and watch some of his videos because um, Professor Ackoff is this uh, crazy dude from the 1990s who's doing what we're doing now, but 30 years ago, and coming up with all the same stuff. And, uh, and when you read his stuff, he's a brilliant orator and uh, very, very succinct, gets to the point very quickly, and he's saying the same things. Don't focus on the parts, focus on the whole. Move away from mechanistic thinking, treat people like human beings, and look at it as a living organizational system. And then, uh, you know, use that as a holistic approach with people not parts of the machine. These are the things that we're coming up with now. He was talking about this decades ago. Fantastic chat. So based on some of the work here. Yeah. And then uh, looking at uh, the right levers to pull. Um, so very, very briefly, uh, we'll go through these things. Um, these are some of the things that you might uh, come across if you're in finance, economics, uh, or, or obviously in the, in the change world. Uh, so I have a, a finance background. Um, so looking at things like this. If we're looking at shareholders, stakeholders, people who are actually paying for this stuff, um, a lot of them are interested in how can I uh, get my business to be invested in? How can I keep the investment coming? How do I keep shareholder value up? So uh, when we look at agility at that level, then it just fits very nicely. I mean, investment decision is basically how much money am I going to make for what risk and over what time frame? And we know that basically we can cut costs. We, there's lots of cost cutting, but mostly we're interested in raising the value, how much money we get back. Um, and we're very good at reducing risk. Ag agility is all about risk reduction. And uh, we're looking at smaller increments of time. So the, it, it makes total sense at the investment level. Uh, supply and demand is not about supply and demand, manipulating that. It's about how quickly can you flex when supply and demand changes. 
So looking at it from that, that type of lever as well. So these are the things we've included. And then this last uh, long one down the bottom here uh, is just taking into account that uh, the cultural shift that we're looking for is an indirect um, change based upon all these other elements, um, mind shift, process and structure, skills and behaviors. Uh, oh, and, there's the, and the last one is uh, looking at um, the mindset shift and what agility is. It's not a bunch of processes. It is a actual shift of the way that you see yourself and the world around you. So we're not going to dig into the onion and the, um, the, the, the agile mindset. Um, that if, you, if you have a look at my blog uh, or on LinkedIn, you can see the, the, um, the explanation for these things if you haven't come across them. So these are things that we've drawn upon. Um, so now we're going to move uh, quickly into the guide for leadership on what is coming. Uh, do you want to uh, talk to this a little bit, Wolfgang? Yeah, okay. So uh, thanks, uh, Simon. After we've gotten out to the initial effort, uh, through the initial effort to align, right? Think of we've gotten close to the uh, startup, um, to the um, runway, uh, and are in a position that we want to kind of like, you know, pull uh, the throttle and, and get moving. Um, now is the point where we have to ensure that the leadership is really deeply understanding, particularly the leaders are understanding what they're getting themselves into and not just what they can expect, but also what is expected of them, right? That's critically important. I had that in the uh, breakout uh, uh, sessions that was uh, also discussed. This is um, not easy or it doesn't come just automatically, but you have to really prepare for that. And the best way to do this, I have my um, experiences back way then when I got into my first um, uh, uh, points with Agile. It's really the experiential uh, learning that is still back, uh, you know, 12 years ago, still on my mind of having really been through a lean production simulation and really um, experienced on my own, with my own hands and my own sweat what the difference between a pull and a push model is, right? And if you have that, uh, give that experience, there are many other ways to do that to leaders as well. You're so much more likely uh, to actually resonate with them what this shift is all about. Okay, so that's critically important. And then, yes, if you go to the next, obviously, uh, like we had this little, um, you know, ideas for what are the things to align on in these uh, four different dimensions, um, there got to be a certain agreements on what we expect from leaders, what they do, as well as certain things that they do not do anymore, right? Um, and uh, uh, give particular guides to executives, what right is also um, uh, expected from them. For example, just being a bystander or saying, I sponsor this, you go ahead and change all, won't cut it, right? It's more nurturing. Um, it's more uh, active involvement that's really needed uh, on their part. And then very often you have all these different kinds of myths and misunderstandings about what Agile is, right? It's the silver bullet. It will free up so and so many people. It will do this, that, and the other. No, let's really clarify, you know, what that is. And based on a sound understanding, an informed decision can be taken, right? Um, and then obviously, uh, uh, this is what uh, Simon mentioned also before, um, starting to think differently about systems, about uh, sys uh, you know, how you improve systems, how interactions happen, etc., with different lens, which are obviously taught through the um, Agile uh, uh, community. And uh, we're obviously uh, recommending a few, but there are many, many more. Uh, that I think is very important, that at least a basic um, uh, package, so to speak, a basic tool set uh, is available here uh, to the leaders so that they can take an active uh, and a very constructive and effective part in this, in this journey. Brilliant. And, uh, and what we've done is uh, we've also got another download for you. Um, and um, I'll put that into um, the chat window. So this is, um, we've actually gone through and created uh, a whole load of um, prerequisites under each of these topics. Uh, we're not going to go into breakout rooms again. Uh, it's in the chat now. 
Uh, we're not going to go into breakout rooms again just because uh, of time and, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've already been talking for a fair amount. But um, there's a document there for you. It details all the leads, the, the do, all the things that Wolfgang just talked around. So you can look at that afterwards. Um, and the, the, the PDF is in the chat window. Um, we're so, obviously, sorry, yeah. uh, Simon, we obviously uh, just want to re, uh, 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 state that we're obviously very um, uh, uh, receptive for our feedback. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So um, this is the um, the third. Uh, we're, we're now getting very close to that uh, runway point of uh, commitment. We're still zooming now along the runway, but we could abort the mission should um, should we need to. Uh, um, so we're going to have a look at this. Uh, so inviting broad leadership engagement. So this is one of the big things that came up in the word cloud that we looked at earlier. Um, leadership not engaged, leadership doesn't give me permission, leadership expects everybody else to do it, not that, all these kind of things. So what is it that we can actually get to the root of so that we don't have, have these challenges? And, um, and so um, we've got some, uh, some things like this. Uh, and the first thing really is um, really seeing the system again. So it's reiterating the same thing again, that the system is a living organism with all these different links. When we look at the hierarchical structure on the left, this is something that we, you know, we're used to seeing, uh, but the actual network structure of who talks to each other, who works to each other, might look a bit more like this one on the right. And then when we start looking and mapping the organization, we see that actually everybody talks to everybody else and that upgrading one part of this actually destabilizes the whole. So understanding this kind of relationship between stakeholders and getting this, which means that we need this broad engagement, not just from leaders, but from our customers, investors, operations, all those kind of things. And again, we'll share with you a document uh, at the end of this section, which breaks this down into the, each, each area and a way to, way to engage them. Uh, anything that you wanted to say on this one? Nope, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are the these are the sections that we uh, looked at in terms of the areas of engagement. Uh, and then in the document we'll share, we break in these sections. We break down the different um, uh, things that are cons the considerations. Right, and and the important part is is it's not just the one time engagement. So we kind of now talk to the shareholders or we talk to the customers or whatnot. But this is about obviously an ongoing broad engagement, right? So you've got to find the right rhythms, obviously with, let's say, leadership, uh, employees, got to be a much tighter uh, cycle, probably, but you've got to find what is the appropriate cycle, uh, feedback loops, right, that you have with these different uh, stakeholders as well, so that you are striving towards alignment. And um, the way that we uh, actually implement this, uh, the, these um, prerequisites, is that we use this facilitative coaching approach and so you might notice at the top there, the very first word is invite. It's not about demanding engagement. You shall do this, you shall do that. We must do this. How do we sell it? What we do is we invite. And then any information that comes back from that invitation is, inv is information for us as a system. And we can hold up a mirror to that. So if there is no broad engagement from one or more of these areas, that's a mirror that we hold up. To, the, to everybody and say, what do we want to do with that? And that's a fantastic conversation to have rather than we haven't got engagement from these people. How do we make them? How do we mandate it? How do we escalate? All those kind of words just causes this resistance, which undermines everything that you're working with. So having this coaching and uh, sense making approach, uh, even at this early stage uh, is really key. Okay, so moving on to the fourth uh, and final um, stage. Um, yeah, now we're about to lift off, right? And uh, so three uh, basic um, ideas or concepts here that we want to emphasize. One is really, um, this is about changing and relentless improvement, right? So this was already uh, in the earlier uh, comment after the breakout. It's not about here's the gigantic plan for the next three or five years, how we do all the changes. No, 
we built obviously uh, a, a plan. What are the next steps? What are maybe the key impediments we need to resolve? What have you? But it is about changing and improvement in an iterative fashion. And for that, we need to obviously ensure that there's readiness to even assess the current structures and see where does it fit into this new world, into this agile way of working, and where doesn't it? And then be ready to either replace or revise it so that it works, right? For example, an annual budget cycle might not be as agile supportive as you need it to drive innovation. Others come to mind. Um, bring agile thinking and methods to all areas of the organization means it's not sufficient if let's say IT or the engineers, you all go agile and we'll wait here and see and tell us when you're ready. No, this is about okay, let's see how can agile way of working help, let's say in the sales or in the marketing domain or in legal or in others, just for the sake of helping improve their way of working. Again, inviting them to see, you know, where opportunities, how they can get their work done better and smarter and more effectively. But then once you have really this um, extended skill set and knowledge and interest um, throughout the company, then comes the opportunity to also look at the processes that really cut across, that break the silos, so to speak, that really follow the value chain from the customer um, and back, uh, and how to improve those, right? Based on own experiences, own experiments in, let's say, HR or in other areas, now we can gauge uh, and get to a better and better and more capable level of working iteratively at scale. Uh, and last not least, I mentioned that already before, this is about iterations. It's about closed feedback cycles on all different levels. And that should include executives, um, how we engage with uh, shareholders or customers, et cetera. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so back to our little uh, uh, um, analogy with we're trying to fly, right? We have to have the commitment that certain patterns, a lot of those are leadership patterns where you would find more details right in the material that uh, Simon mentioned, we have to discontinue. I don't wanna reiterate all of those, command and control, right? Uh, squeezing in, intervene to fix all problems, the hero cult, all these kinds of things, right? We have to let go. And in our metaphor, if you click one more, right? This is about, it's like kind of like pulling in the landing gear, right? So that, you know, we are actually um, uh, able to really uh, accelerate and, and gain altitude, right? So we, unless we let these things go, we might get a bit agile here and a bit agile there, but it won't be sustainable and it won't be on scale, right? Um, likewise, on the other hand, we obviously need to practice, adopt, and evolve certain patterns. And here are the, like the do's, Again, more details around this also in the material. Um, and uh, I put up here the, uh, the gravity um, constant um, to just help us remind, even though we might have mastered these behaviors or these patterns for a certain while, unless we keep looking at it and keep working on further improving, sooner or later, gravity will get us and will drag us down, right? That's one part of, you know, remembered with this analogy, um, you have to keep investing and keep um, focusing on uh, improvements. Um, uh, otherwise, sooner or later, you know, you, you might lose the best of your of your um, uh, capacity or capabilities uh, uh, through the agile journey. Uh, the other is, uh, on the other hand, and that's where actually there's a difference between our analogy with the pilot and the agile transformation. Um, Gravity never sleeps means the pilot, when they are on this runway and they're pulling it, right, pulling the plane up, they better don't make mistakes because gravity will get us, right? We actually have the opportunity to experiment. And unlike in certain business areas, in most, it's actually we can be forgiving if there is an error, a mistake that happens. As long as we recognize it early, and learn from it such that, right, we improve and don't run into the same problems again, um, we can do that. So be mindful of that as well, right? Yeah, that's that's essentially where, um, you know, this was leading. And if you just go to the next, that kind of 
sums it up, right? We're not saying this is the full-blown transformation plan or any of that sort. This was primarily about how do we get in a position, right, that the starting position is, the starting lineup is um, professional and is, um, uh, is, is uh, comprehensive so that our journey is much more likely to succeed and we'll gain altitude and we'll become agile and be hitting the goals that we are uh, seeking. Fantastic. So um, hopefully this has been helpful. The, the real detail is in the documents which, we're, which we've half shared and we'll just share the other links in a second. Um, and uh, the documents uh, are in these four steps. So we've shared the first one and the second one so far. We'll just share the third and fourth. And um, if you take them in that order, and what we've done is we, the way that we actually run these transformations, we've built a process around this. We have training classes. We have, um, we have uh, workshops for leaders uh, to actually get the alignment to, to, to do the stuff that we're talking around. So obviously that's our kind of... Um, uh, that's our kind of proprietary kind of way that we implement it. But these are the underlying prerequisites of which you can then take forwards and uh, implement your own strategy for helping an organization to uh, achieve these things before committing to millions and millions of dollars, euro, pounds, whatever, um, in the actual change process. So hopefully this can save a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of frustration. Um, and um, uh, we hope it's, hope it's useful. Um, so, um, uh, to kind of just to sum up, then as a kind of conclusion of where what we've done, um, then um, this is a fantastic. Uh, the journal walk us quickly through this. This is like a summary of the whole thing. Um, yeah, do this sure, you? happy to do that. Uh, thanks, Simon uh, and Pierre. I hope uh, this finds your interest, uh, as I think you've been challenging me on Thursday to come up with this. Um, so thanks to Craig uh, Cockburn's idea. Um, well, I work to be a nice person today. <laughs> um, this is trying to highlight kind of like the key points right in these different sections that we were talking about. We started obviously, where do we come from? Um, then talked a bit about case studies, you know, that incent or the problem, described the problem of what we wanted to do. Um, and, uh, and, and show, you know, with uh, obviously challenges up front, but the uh, breakout session, then uh, we moved into the proposed solution. We focused uh, on what is it to get us the right uh, starting point. So have uh, the four views of change, the what, why, how, who, uh, right? And the different stages here from experimental learning uh, on the leadership, um, really engaging broadly leaders and the, and the whole the teams. Uh, as well as then really get into this uh, firm, uh, deep commitment. All right. right. And then follow up is uh, what, yeah, you will cover later now. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Sure no problem. That. No problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. And review. I mean, we were planning for another breakout session. I'm not quite sure what the timing looks like. Um, well, we can still do that. Uh, it's 10 to 8. 10 to 8. Yeah, we'll probably leave that. I, th I thought we'd probably skip that uh, last session yeah. just because it's a bit late. It's getting tight. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, and then, right, this very learning map, again, I've um, um, borrowed this here from, from Craig, this format is uh, hopefully giving you um, a different uh, kind of reminder of uh, what we discussed here. Yeah, and then the follow-ups could be diagnostics, uh, which we can engage with you, training, coaching, consulting, any other help, uh, or co-creation, joint work that might be possible out of this. A mirror, mirror workshop. For example. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so talking of the follow-up, um, if um, so uh, Wolfgang and I are for hire, should you uh, need any help with yep. your uh, prerequisites and uh, helping with that, so we were more than happy to help uh, create a program around um, these prerequisites uh, and also around um, getting an organization ready. Uh, we can do that fairly briefly, fairly swiftly, um, because we've done a lot of the prep work, a lot of the pre-work, and we've got a lot of workshops and things that we can pull together so that we can uh, help you get ready so that you can avoid the pitfalls. So um, feel free to uh, work with us. And uh, we've got a, um, some contact information here. Um, and so also, so not only for uh, hiring us for our uh, amazing skills, um, then uh, also please for feedback. 
uh, as well uh, on this content and material that we have provided in, in this uh, space. So you've got our um, LinkedIn, feel free to link in with us uh, or uh, email us or whatever. Uh, and uh, we, what we look forward to um, speaking with you um, around whatever feedback and things that you might provide. Yep. Fantastic. Um, uh, the only other um, thing that I'd like to add while we're talking about um, just the next steps and things, um, we do have a, um, I'm running a, uh, a week-long boot camp and a cohort program over nine months, which also has a lot of these elements in. We'll be following some of that into that program. And um, I'm hoping that uh, some of you here, there's one last chance if you haven't got the qualifications to get onto the cohort with this boot camp. So if you are interested, I don't want to go on too much about that, it's a bit off topic, but um, it, is, um, uh, it, it is a fantastic program. Uh, and if you want to um, check out the website, Venture to the Agile, and um, it would be fantastic if you come along to that. It's very along the lines of what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, any, um, anything else that we wanted to, uh, to do before we all, I guess, questions, answers, anything like that? Do we have, what, Pierre, what, what, uh, over to you. How would you like to facilitate? Do, do we finish now? Do you want questions no, and answers? No, we can finish just so softly. So just given information about from the people from the Azure Praxis group here. Uh, on Saturday, we have the Play 24 Hours, uh, which is the online facilitation starting 9 a.m. in the morning in Sydney and ending 5 p.m. in the afternoon in Mexico. So you can have online uh, 24 hours with the whole Play 14 community um, doing one day for 20 euros, which is a laughter as money. And another, way, <laughs> and, uh, and another way around is the next session will be in two weeks with uh, James Slowly about overlaps between clean language and agile. So uh, James Slowly is one of the godfather of clean language, very interesting person. So people, if you are interested, coming here. Uh, for people from the Agile Praxis community, I will share the content of the chat in, in the message through the meetup group. And uh, the recording will be shared as raw material to Simon and Wolfgang. They can do whatever they want. And next week, I will start editing this video. This will be made available on, you, on our favorite YouTube channel. And if people are want to keep, stay here, I'll keep the, the link open for chit chat, whatever, conversation, question, stupid jokes, and whatever. Okay. So thank you so much. It was a great session. Thank you so much, Wolfgang and Simon. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. Thank you yes. indeed. Um,